fun things we do here at Whiskey and Wet, I always get asked which ones are my favorite. And while I love them all, I will always have a special place in my heart for DIY dupes. Over the years, I've learned that items from Pottery Barn, Kirkland's, and West Elm are so my style, but they are not in alignment with my budget. So I've learned a ton of tips and tricks on how to DIY things instead of buy them to save hundreds of dollars. I'm not kidding. It is insane how much you can save DIYing. So today I'm pulling back the curtain. I am sharing my tips and tricks to help you get a house that looks like a million bucks on a budget. watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge thank you to Hungry Root for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the first project because I've got so many dupes to share with you today. This first one I promise you anyone can do it and it's a dupe on these modern color stack book sets. They were selling four to five piece groupings for $149 on the Pottery Barn site. I loved the different colors, the facts you could customize it for any season, but that is way out of my budget. So instead I went to Dollar Tree, checked out the book section, and picked out any of the ones in colors that I wanted. I originally was looking for a wide variety to add some color to the bookshelf in my craft room, but I also love to look at thrift stores for larger coffee table books and also some more neutral colors. This is one of my favorite local thrift stores. I love looking at all of their books because they're only a couple bucks a piece and I'm able to find some that really fit the area that we live and my interests. You just wanna make sure you're finding ones that have the color that's gonna match the vibe you're going for when you take the book jacket off. And it's also really nice to find items that fit your individual interests like antique collecting for me. All you have to do is pop the book jacket off when you get home and then you can go ahead and style with them. I did the variety of colors. All of these are from Dollar Tree on my craft room shelf. So it was so much cheaper than going the Pottery Barn route. I also love to have larger ones and a variety of neutrals and blues to match my house. I stack them up either one or three to go with the odd number rule of thirds. And this is a great representation of some interests of mine, like important women, 20th century Chicago, and their first time in the movies. I've also been able to find some cool books on the history of broadcasting, which is totally up my alley as well. You can totally make this your own, customize it for any season, and you can save a ton of money. Fun fact, did you know that West Elm is actually owned by Pottery Barn? It's part of their array of brands and that's where this next dupe came from. This rainbow decorative object was $68 for a set of two so I decided to grab two of these Target wood cutout pieces in the craft section. They're usually on an end cap. If not, you might have to go into the craft aisle. I decided to stain mine with English chestnut stain from Minwax, but you could paint them. You could do a lighter stain, a black stain, whatever works for your decor. Then you can use them however you want. I'm gonna use them as bookends like I saw in the original inspo with these faux books from Hobby Lobby, but you could use them as just little decorative sculptures. And the best part is $68 versus a little over $10 for my set of two. So much savings and you could do so many other projects with all that extra cash. When you browse the Pottery Barn site, you see a ton of room setups and these candles are always a staple in what they are showing you on how to style it. But even the small one was $69 of the stoneware candle, and this one's pretty at Target, but it's 40 bucks still. So instead, we are going to head to the thrift store and find a fun container that has some character. I really love this stoneware one. It's the perfect size, and it was only $6. I ended up gluing wicks that I already had in my craft room, but I originally got them from Amazon, so I will link them for you. You can find all the supplies that I'm using today down below in the description box. And I put some wax that I just got from Hobby Lobby, but you could also melt down a Dollar Tree pillar candle in the same way in a double boiler on my sink. Now this Pyrex is only used for my candle making, so don't use the one that you're gonna cook with. And I like to use straws or sticks to hold up my wicks. And then I'm just gonna pour in the amount of melted wax I need to fill my candle. It's going to start this darker color, but then it's going to harden into a white and I let it kind of harden overnight and then I just trim with regular scissors the wicks and this is a great decorative piece. I want to call out that I do not light these candles just for safety especially because it's a second hand vessel that had a slight crack in it so I don't want the heat to do anything crazy to my house but I do love using it to style vignettes. And all in, even with the wax, you're looking at under 15 bucks for the candle versus the 40 or even 99 that Pottery Barn wanted. Year over year, a staple on the Pottery Barn and other high-end sites are these black candle holders. You can find them a ton of different places. I like to go to the thrift store because it helps with sustainability, but you can also get them on clearance from different stores or you can even shop your house. 
I like to grab ones that are shapes that I like, but I don't necessarily like the color. This one, I could just unscrew the top part. I gave it a good clean and I took all of these outside. Some of them were already in my collection. So that's another great thing to do is shop your house. I spray paint them black. You can also spray paint them gold. And the best part about it is the set looks like you almost went antiquing to find it instead of it being matchy matchy, which I love. Let's up the ante for these next ones and talk about larger items like lamps. I love ones that can be functional as well as decorative and this lamp was so on my list, but I can't spend $400 on a lamp. So again, we're not going to sleep on the thrift store because it's one of my favorite places to buy lamps. If you're not a thrifter, honestly, that is one of the biggest ways that you can dupe these high-end pieces, or you can even shop your house, but make sure that you clean it because you saw all that nasty coming off of there. I like to use like Lysol products and things that are really going to get germs and stuff off of there. Then we're going to tape off the electrical and mix up some plaster of Paris. I just followed the instructions on the container. I got the container from Amazon and you're going to mix it up until you get like a pancake batter consistency essentially. I'm using gloves and I started with a base coat putting it on there. You want to make it more on the thicker side but you want to make sure that it's pliable. Now this is going to set up pretty quick so you want to work kind of fast and I'm making sure that I am working into the grooves but not so much that I completely lose the grooves and you can get really creative with how you do this. Now you want to try to spread it out as much as you can but let it set up first then get your hand a little wet and go through and get rid of any of those peaks and valleys that you don't like. That way you're not taking a wet glove and smearing all of it off it's just going to help you kind of buff it in essentially. Here's what mine looked like after I let the plaster of Paris set and we're going to let it completely dry. Once I let it completely dry for a few hours or overnight, I'm going to mix some of this sandstone paint as well as some dried coffee grounds from a K-cup. I made sure that they were dried out so then that way you don't have to worry about like it getting icky with mold. It's going to give you some great texture. You could also use things like cinnamon to add a little bit of a brown color, but I really like the little flex because it makes it look more like found pottery. Then I'm going through with a little bit of this brown color just to buff in any areas and that is going to give it a multi-dimensional color. Now you don't want to leave it fully painted on there. You're going to buff it in with the other color. My last step was to seal everything in so I just used a triple thick spray sealant in matte finish. I don't like glossy on top of this because it's not going to give you the look that you want but once it has a matte finish this lamp is good to go it looks so similar to the one that they are selling with grabbing thrifted lamps it's never going to be 100 percent the same as the inspo but you can get shapes that are pretty darn close and i was able to save 91 percent off of the pottery barn price a $30 lamp versus $3.99 is more up my alley anyway. Also, if you get a lamp that doesn't work, I suggest using battery operated little light bulbs. I have a favorite from Amazon that I will link down below. With all the hustle and bustle that was the holiday season, we kind of slacked on meal planning at our house, which led to ordering way too much takeout. And not only is that expensive, but I was not feeling my best. And also we were wasting food that we had in the fridge. So I said, enough is enough. And I ordered a Hungry Root box for the week after Christmas. Now, if you've been around a while, you know that I love Hungry Root. I've worked with them before and I've been a customer for over a year and they're hands down my absolute favorite online grocery store because they make our weeknight meals so much easier and they are so good. What I really like about Hungry Root is that they bring together the ease of meal kit recipes with the convenience of grocery delivery. We love that the recipes are super flavorful and we don't have to think about it. We just grab and cook. So to get started, I took a short quiz about our lifestyle so that the tech can learn things like how we like to eat, how much time we want to spend cooking, and our overall goals. I entered upping our veggies and saving money. It takes what you enter from the quiz and beep, 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 and spits out a pre-filled personalized grocery cart that you can either roll with or you can make as many edits as you want before the box ships to you. I love the suggestion period because we have found so many brands that we love that we can't get near us in a grocery store. Then delivery day is great because our empty fridge gets fully stocked in just a couple minutes with not only dinner options, but also things for breakfast, lunch, and snacks for my craft room. Then when it's time to cook, I grab my Hungry Root app and it lists out all the ingredients that I need. It also runs me through the easy recipe like this rigatoni a la vodka with grilled chicken. And the box also comes with printed instructions. If that's more your style, I just love the Hungry Root app. After each delivery, I can quickly give feedback on all the items we got in the box, and I can even rate the recipes and add specific notes. All of that is gonna add up to better and better boxes each time. The more in tune it has gotten with our taste, the more time it has saved me. 
And as an exclusive for my craft buddies, the first 100 people to use the code WIT40 will get 40% off their first grocery order with Hungry Root. Use the link down in the description or scan this QR code and use the code WIT40 to get 40% off. I'm always looking for fun ways to add texture to my setups in my house. And so I was inspired by these $99 outdoor candles. I decided to head to Home Depot, grab some mortar mix, but you could also use fast drying concrete and make some containers myself. Now I went on a hunt and found a bunch of different containers from Dollar Tree and Target so that I could test them out and let you guys know. Everything from Tupperware to hard plastic serveware at Dollar Tree. In a bucket, I eyeballed the amount of mortar mix that I needed and then I mixed it with water according to the package instructions. I'm just using a five gallon bucket paint stir stick to get it all mixed up. Now you want the consistency to be to a point where when you pick it up, it's not going to fall when you flip the stick over like this. So you kind of want to add water and mixture until you get it where you want. Now you're gonna grab two different size bowls. You want them to be similar shapes and we're gonna grease the inside of the first one. That is so your bowl comes out and doesn't crack. Then we're gonna add our mix and then grease the bottom of the second bowl, just so then that way anything that's coming into contact with the mortar mix is nice and slicked up. You can also use vegetable oil on like a paper towel, but I just decided to go with the spray. It's a lot easier. Once you push your bowl in to get the desired shape that you want, I also took my little rubber mallet and hit the sides just to get out any air bubbles. And then I am going to make sure that that is pushed down so it dries like that. I did a ton of different varieties of different sizes, but the same method, you're gonna grease the inside of the bottom one, the outside of the top one, add some additional weight to the top. And then you also wanna make sure that that top is flat so your bowl area is kind of flat like that. I also wanted some square ones like the inspiration. So I took this tray from Dollar Tree and did the exact same process. I just made sure that none of the mortar mix touched the next container next to it. So then they were all separate items and I didn't have to try to break them apart later on. Now here is where you have to be patient. These, I got really excited and I wanted to test it out sooner than it should have been. And so definitely let them sit 48 hours just like this. Don't touch them, just let them sit. I got a little too crazy and thought it was dry. I tried to get the other bowl out and this is what happened. And it made me so sad. And when I tell you that's where I need to cut the clip off because I had a few choice words, I am just sharing a little tidbit, a little real life. What I learned is when you see those dark splotches, when you take the center bowl out, that means it's not fully dry. So you want to let these things dry like an absorbent amount. This turns out to be about a five day process start to finish. You're going to be so glad you spent the five days, but definitely mix it. Let it sit for two days, take them out of the bowl and then give them another one to two days to sit. And that is what made the best results for me. Something I didn't do this round, but I definitely would recommend for the next round that I make these is to add a couple felt pieces to the bottom of the bowl. That's just going to make it so you have it on wood like this. It's not going to scratch your surfaces or leave any like gritty residue. But the five day process is so worth it because I always get questions when I use these in staging of where I got them. All of mine are not a direct dupe, but I got all of mine for about $10 in DIY supplies because the mortar mix is so cheap. So I think that is a win. I've had a large mirror on my wish list for a while and I fell in love with this reclaimed one, but again, $600. So of course we went to the thrift store. You can also look at your local hardware store, Facebook Marketplace, or even Walmart will have ones with good bases. And I ended up finding this one for 15 bucks. I loved that it had the border already because then I could just build up from there. I ended up going to Home Depot and finding a one by six piece of wood. I just went with the regular pine. A quick tip while you're shopping for the wood is you wanna make sure there aren't any visible bows in the wood. And you also wanna make sure there aren't huge gashes out of them like you're seeing here. So check if it's bowed, take it off, lay it on an angle on the floor. And as you look down the wood, you can see this one goes to the left. This one is straight. If you want more tips on how to pick out wood or how to woodwork in general, I have a full beginner's guide. I will link that up in the iCards as well as down below if you wanna check that out. Now we're gonna lay down our wood on the first side. I decided to do the long ones first and I'm going to measure so then that way I know how to cut my 45 degree angles. I'm gonna take my saw and set it at a 45 degree miter 
and then I'm going to cut the first edge. Then I'm gonna lay it down and make sure that it is the right length. I'm gonna mark it so it fits my mirror, and I'm also gonna make a small little mark on there so I know what direction to cut the 45 degree angle. They're gonna be perpendicular, and if I don't mark it, I will cut it wrong, and then I will be very upset. After you cut that first piece, we are going to cut a second piece, the exact same, just mirror for the other side of your mirror. So now we've got our two sides and we're gonna measure long point to long point on either end and my ended up being 29 inches. So I'm gonna cut another 45 degree angle and then I am going to make it so it's 29 inches from the long point to the long point. So I'm measuring our long point here, 29 inches. And then I also made another mark to make sure that I was cutting at the right angle. If you have a piece of wood and you're not gonna be cutting at the right angle, you can flip it over and that will solve the problem. Once I do that one fit, I cut the exact same one for the bottom and it was time to distress to get that really old reclaimed wood look. Now I went to town with a hammer, some needle nose pliers. I also did a flathead screwdriver with my mallet. I wanted some deep valleys within the wood. I really wanted it to look just like beat up like I found it on the side of the road or in an old barn somewhere. And so it took some time and I just really got creative. There was no rhyme or reason. I also used my flathead screwdriver to pop off some pretty big divots on the end pieces. And you'll see here in a second that it really gave it character. Once I got done distressing, I just took a 220 grit little sanding block and got rid of all the little pieces that were sticking up. I don't wanna go over it with a power sander cause you're gonna get rid of a lot of the character you just put in there. And the pine that I had wasn't super, super rough to begin with. If it is rough, sand before you distress and then just do a hand sand. Then to assemble this frame to go around my mirror, I decided to use pocket holes. This is a Craig jig and Craig has a really great tutorial video on how to use their system. This is like a $29 little tool and you just use it with clamps. And I absolutely love it because it gives you pocket holes and then you can use pocket hole screws to hide them. And it also gives you a solid joint. I'm gonna clamp this down to the table and I'm gonna use one long side as well as a short side to hook everything together. Now, as you can see here, you're not seeing any distressing because I put those pocket holes on the back because we are going to hide them. So on the front, you're gonna get a nice flush look without any screw holes there. Now I ended up doing three quarter inch holes, three quarter inch pocket holes rather, and then I'm using some one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to attach it on each joint. So I've got two holes on each corner. So that's two screws per joint to hook everything together. And I put those pocket holes on the shorter top and bottom pieces. Once I got all those assembled, everything was nice and flush and then it was time to finish it. So I decided to use some early American stain and I made sure to fill any of those gaps with some extra stain so it came out bold like this. Let it dry in the sun overnight, and then it was time to hook my frame to my actual mirror. So I'm gonna use a caulk gun and some heavy duty liquid nails here to get the top off. There's a little hole in a caulk gun that you can cut off the end or you can use scissors. And then we're gonna take this little stick that pops out of the front and push it into that nozzle. That is going to open the gateway between the plastic nozzle and the actual container of liquid nails. We're gonna pump it, and then we're gonna apply it all the way around the outside of our mirror. This is going to allow us to get basically a super heavy duty construction grade adhesive between our frame and our mirror frame. So I'm getting everything lined up and then I'm going to clamp it on all four sides just to make sure everything is set. Once I have it clamped down, I grabbed my nail gun and used some one and a quarter inch brad nails to nail all the way around the outside to that highest point of the frame. And then I also went in a little bit just to make sure that this was attached. You wanna let those liquid nails cure for at least 24 hours, but then after that was done, the nails will hold it while it's curing. And this thing is beautiful. I literally cannot believe how great this turned out. I was hoping it would, but the distressing on the pine worked so well. I think this looks so beautiful and it's definitely what I had in mind for this space in our front room. We've got windows on the opposite wall, so it definitely reflects a lot of that natural light and I think this turned out beautifully. So I was able to save 93%. Now let's be honest, I was not spending $600 on a mirror like ever, but being able to create this myself was super, super fun. 
These handwoven baskets are so pretty and add some texture to wherever you put them, but at $160 a pop from Pottery Barn, way too much. So to DIY them, I went looking for much cheaper alternatives that looked like a great base that I could then add the hand woven texture to. The top one is Threshold from Target and that one was 30 bucks. And then at my local Marshalls, I found this chest. I'm gonna use it for beach towels this summer. And it's so nice because you can open it and there's a ton of room inside. And that one was only $30 with the lid. Now for the one that I'm gonna make over for the hand woven look, I grabbed this one for $16.99 at my Marshalls as well. So to get that look, I'm gonna take some cotton twine that I got from Dollar Tree, but you can use yarn, whatever you have. I just like the thin cotton look and a doll needle. Now I like this high synth seagrass basket because it already has openings in the weave. So I was able to tie on my yarn string and get to work. Once it was tied on, I got to work and really I just kind of wung it whatever felt good as I went. I decided to do this kind of step up and down thing and I got to a certain part where it, the weave was really tight. So all you have to do is find the next opening, get your twine through, and then you can kind of shimmy it over like dental floss so that it is all nice and even. Then I made it all the way to the end, tied it off, and this basket is ready to go. Now you could go around the entire outside, but I decided it is a little bit tedious, so I didn't wanna spend all that time on it. I figured I could always flip it around if I want a plain basket. And I really like just this touch of hand embroidery. And I also love that I know that I did it myself. This basket looks so good styled with my DIY 2x4 bench that is also a dupe, which I will share later on in this video. The price difference is going to be about 85% if you buy the basket and do the embroidery versus buying it all pre-done. And that's definitely Whitney approved. So what happens if you want to make a lamp, but you can't find an actual lamp, but you can find a vase the right shape? Well, that's what happened to me before I found that other lamp. And I'm going to show you how I turned this vase into a lamp with no wiring required. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to need some sort of wood piece or plastic piece that you can stick on the top of your vase. I liked this one because the grooves were on the inside, so I knew once I painted it, I wasn't going to have an issue. I used a mixture of hot glue and super glue to stick it on the top. And then I mixed a little bit of baking soda with some elephant chalk paint and I painted the entire thing. Now the baking soda usually gives me a thicker texture, so I don't know if it was my fault with the mixture. Probably was. I'll take one for the team there but I ended up finding a better solution and I'm so glad I did. So it was kind of a happy accident. I ended up taking some of this Drydex spackling and applying it with like a Cricut scraper over the top and then letting it fully dry. I did it in a variety of different patterns and angles and I tried to get it to be as flat as I could, but also keeping the texture. It goes on pink, but then it dries white. So once it was dry, I went outside with a sanding sponge and I got any huge like craters or huge mounds of it down. And then I went back over the top of it with some more of that elephant paint to make it really look like concrete. Once I did that, it was definitely the look I was going for. And then it was time to turn it into a lamp. So I took this little one by two scrap that I had laying around. I glued it to that wood piece on the top. And then it was time to add the piece de resistance or my little magic trick. I love these bulbs from Amazon. You get a pack of four with a remote and you can do this with any lamp, but I thought this would be nice because it came with a base so I didn't have to find anywhere to put the light into. You stick your light onto your lampshade like you would any other one, and then you can stick this 3M pad down to the piece of wood. Then I've got this beautiful textured lampshade that I got for 10 bucks from Target. And then I can turn this thing on or off with the touch of a remote. I love the mixture of the concrete as well as this rattan lampshade. And this is so nice in our dining room where I don't really have an outlet near it, but then I can turn it on at night and we've got light in that room if Finn wants to be in there. If you don't need a lamp, no worries, because you can use that same technique on vases just to have them as vessels. I love to pick up faux stems and it really adds a pop of greenery, especially now when it is dreary outside. I live in Illinois, and so I absolutely love having all these different containers. This picture actually started out like this. It was eight bucks. I covered it with plaster of Paris like I did before. And once that dried, I went over with just some black chalk paint. I left some of the white peeking through so it kind of gave it a two-toned look and I just added some eucalyptus. I also have different ones that I switch out for every season. This is such a quick and easy project to get that look. 
I also needed something that was larger scale, so I found this one hiding at a thrift store. I did a similar process as the lamp with the brown and the coffee grounds. It looks really good filled with these olive branches from Hobby Lobby and this final one is filled with some beautiful stems from Michaels. I'm hoping they bring them back this year. I bought these last year but they are so pretty and this is the similar thing that I did with the picture. Just cover it with plaster in Paris but this one is a dark gray color instead. <laughs> I love this bench, especially because I needed one for a specific area of my front room, and that one was way too big, so I actually was forced to do a DIY dupe, and I love how mine turned out. There are a ton of different options of these benches all around the internet, and this was one of the cheapest ones I found, which was $120. I went to my local hardware store, Menards, and I got one 2x4x8, and I also grabbed a 2x8x4-foot-long piece of construction lumber for the seat of the bench. So the first thing I did was cut up my two by four. I needed two legs and two braces. And then I also cut 36 inches off of my two by eight. So again, two by eight at 36 inches. I did two two by fours at six inches long and I added 10 degree perpendicular ends and then four two by fours at 24 inches with 10 degree miters. The 10 degree miters are optional, but I do like them on the edge because it's going to help your bench sit flat on the floor. So I just tilted my saw in the back. There's a little lever if your saw does that. And I just cut 10 degrees on an angle. And for your legs, you want those to be parallel cuts. Then I went through, sanded everything. And I also rocked around the corners of the two by eight so that there wasn't anything poking out, especially for Finn on the edge of the bench. Then it was the fun part to distress everything. I used my hammer, both the back and the front, to create little nicks and dings in the wood. Pine is a really soft wood, so it's easy to distress like this, and it's gonna make the wood look more reclaimed like our inspirations. Then I used my Craig jig to create pocket holes on the top pieces that were going into the bench seat, and I will go into more detail on how to use a Craig jig on a later project in this video. I'll walk you through it step by step. I ended up doing one and a half inch pocket holes and two and a quarter inch pocket hole screws, drilled it right in to the bottom of the two by eight. And I did two on one side and two on the other, making sure to measure as I go. So everything was kind of evenly spaced out. They sit so nicely on the bottom of the bench with that 10 inch miter. And again, you could screw if you don't have a Craig jig straight through the seat and then just cover it with wood filler before you finish the bench. So there are options if you don't have that Craig jig, it was just easier for me. Then I tried to do pocket holes for the little braces, but there wasn't enough room. So I ended up just going through with a three inch self tapping screw to hook it in from either side. So the brace made the legs stronger. Then I decided to do a little bit of experimenting with some stains that I've had in my stash for a while. Aged barrel, English chestnut, and then also a white stain that Alex bought for a project that we didn't end up using. I started by putting down a little bit of the aged barrel, which is more of a gray stain. I went over the top with this early American and kind of went back and forth until I got a color that I liked with the gray and the brown. And then I went over the top with the white stain and this is where the magic happened. It really made it look distressed, reclaimed, especially with all of those nicks in the wood. I completed that all the way around my bench and you can do as much or as little as you want, but I was going for splotchy, I was going for reclaimed, I was going for rustic, kind of that organic modern. After it was dried overnight, I went through with that Verithane triple thick again. I really like it because you can do one coat and you've got really good coverage, especially when you're looking at a bench where people could be sitting on it because this is strong enough to hold me up and I'm not a small individual. So this is something that people could sit on. It could be at the end of a bed. And in lumber, it was under 10 bucks, but all in it was under 25 with all the additional things like screws and stain and stuff. It could definitely be like a side table decorated like I'm doing here, or you could add it to the end of the bed or like I'm doing here in our living room just with a blanket. If you enjoyed that last project, you're definitely going to want to check this out. Last year, I was inspired by this collection to build an entire patio set of furniture for our house. We had this beautiful deck, but nowhere to sit. And so I decided to dupe basically all of the pieces that Pottery Barn sells in their set.
If I was to buy the set, it would be almost $2,000. I was able all in to make mine for under 500. So if you're interested in making your own set for this coming spring and summer to enjoy in your home, you wanna check out my cheap and easy two by four wood DIYs so you can see how that all came together. And if you loved this video, this is just the tip of the iceberg of all of the dupe projects that I have done. So if you're interested, be sure to check out my full dupes playlist as well as my full thrifting playlist. I will be able to share tons more tips and tricks with you so you can make your house look like a million bucks in 2024. All of that will be linked down in the description. That's going to do it for this round of dupes. Be sure to head down to the comments and let me know as always which one was your favorite. Also a huge thank you to Hungry Root for sponsoring this video. Remember the exclusive offer for my craft buddies. The first 100 people to use the code WIT40 will get 40% off your first grocery order with Hungry Root. You can either scan this QR code or head down to the link in the description. And before you leave, if you're not already a craft buddy, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss any future dupe and DIY videos here on my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.